duty calls, the LAPD responds. Let's be careful out there. Working as a team to protect and to serve. Driver's got a gun. Leave us alone! Where I can just let her go. We have a critical missing. I lost my puppy. To fight crime and to keep our streets safe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside the LAPD. I'm Mary Grady, Public Information Director for the Los Angeles Police Department. I'm in Highland Park, home to the LAPD's Historical Society Museum and Community Education Center. But this building is really much more than just a museum. This is actually the oldest surviving LAPD police station in the city, originally opened in 1925. When you walk through the front doors of this police station, you're walking into the past and into LAPD's history. And here to greet us, Executive Director Glenn Martin. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. Well, we're in the lobby of the 1925 station. The original lobby? No, uh, it is faithfully recreated, though, to resemble what was once here and what's once served the, the Highland Park area of the city of Los Angeles. Today, we're fortunate to have it not as a police station, but as a police museum. In fact, one of the full-time, one of the only full-time police museums in the entire nation. Really? So, in 1925, if I came up, I'd walk up to this front desk, right? Well, you'd walk up to something that was very similar to this. Uh, this, in fact, was recreated as a movie set. Uh, and I think a lot of people that take a look at this are going to recognize the front of the building from many movies and television shows. And the same thing for the desk here. This has been used and reused and over and over again. It is indeed a movie set. Uh, but it was faithfully recreated in the spirit of what was here uh, as a front desk in the police station. So in 1925, if I had walked in, this wouldn't have been here. What would I have walked into? Well, you would have walked into uh, a much larger lobby. The desk was set farther back. Uh, you actually would have seen, um, indeed, dark wood instead of Formica. Uh, <laughs> Formica yeah. was a little bit later to the game here. De dead giveaway that this isn't the original. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is our giveaway. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, architecturally very similar to the desk that did serve here when it was an active station. All right, now looking through, the first thing that catches my eye is all the way in the back. That looks like a jail? That is, and when you talk about things that are original to the building, that's one of the items that is original. It is a 1925 set of five contiguous jail cells. Let's go take a look. All right. This does not look like any jail that you would see anymore in a police station. This is the original. This is. This is original in 1925. Uh, very much uh, a gray bar jail that you'd be accustomed to see um, deep in our past here. Uh, this is, in fact, though, uh, the easier side of the jail, if you will. This is the misdemeanor side where the people that were uh, involved in less serious offenses would be held until their court date, or for a long period of time, they were sentenced misdemeanor prisoners, and this was their home. Okay, and I see we've got four cells? Actually, there's five. Five cells, a, okay. A group of five contiguous cells, and one of the things that you'll notice here that uh, is completely different than when it served as a jail is there's just a single bunk in each one of these cells. Right. When this went on a service, there were three bunks in each cell, meaning there were three people held in this very small space. Three people? Three people in each one of these. What, did they stack the bunks? They did. Not much privacy to be had. Uh, there was some interaction, as you can see. The, the cells are only separated by the bars. There was some interaction, so six people, nine people could converse, play checkers, um, pass me messages or notes to one another. Right. Yeah, a lot of that going on because you can just do it one right through. But I, I can't imagine three people in a cell this size. You'd have to be very friendly with your cellmates. <laughs> Absolutely. Who's been in these jail cells? Anybody that uh, we would recognize? You know, that part of our history isn't particularly well documented. And I got to think that there, there were some people of note that were in here. Uh, and again, this was the misdemeanor side. So somebody that would have got caught for shoplifting or a drunk driver here or there, or maybe somebody that had a disagreement with somebody on the street. The bad folks were, were housed elsewhere in the building here. So, you know, average people, um, people of note that might make a minor mistake, they might have wound up here. Okay, I've heard that Chief Daryl Gates 
when he was a young man, was actually arrested and brought to the station. Would he have been? You know, he, he wasn't here. He actually visited not, not long ago <laughs> and showed us where he was held. He was just, uh, he was just seated in a chair uh, upstairs in the, in the old detective bureau and held up there for a bit. <laughs> little teenage mischief. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that happen when you're that age. <laughs> now, I do notice something interesting. You look and all the bars are very straight, but you get back to this corner up over here, and the bars are actually kind of crooked. Is that the way they built it? No, actually, everything was uh, straight and perpendicular, and the um, problem here is, and again, this is the part of the building original in 1925. While it stood vacant in April of 1990, uh, the interior of the building burnt. The heat from that fire was so intense that it warped the cross members on the bars there. So it is a reminder that this, uh, this building is old. It does have a history all its own. Uh, and in this case, it's illustrated in these, uh, uh, in these tweaked cross members here. Now, I would have to imagine, do these still work? Yes. OK. I would have to imagine that the uh, movie industry loves these old jail cells, right? Th this is typically what brings the entertainment industry out to us. Uh, there are very few places that you can actually go and put somebody in jail and film their, their incarceration, and this happens to be one of them here in the city of Los Angeles. And as you can see, it is very confining, and the noise that goes with that, confining, with that confinement is very distinct. Yeah, that's, that is. <laughs> it kind of gives you a sense. I like being on the outside. And that's a good place for all of us to be. Okay, there's a lot more to see, so let's go take a look at what else. Oh, well, wait a minute. Before we do, though, what's this? This is the booking chair? This is the chair. Somebody that, that did happen to run right. afoul of the law. This will be the only time you ever see me in a booking chair. We wouldn't want to record their visit here to one of the stations or one of the jails here at, uh, at LAPD. In this case, these would be adjusted to the corresponding booking number that you were assigned to, and this, of course, would reflect the date. Okay. And this is the, this is the original? This is how they used to do it, huh? This is how they did it. And this is one of the original uh, setups that would have been in front of a booking camera. Okay. Uh, literally, millions of people. In fact, we recently we had a donor turn over the booking card for the millionth customer that was served by our jail system, and that dated back to the early 1960s. So uh, since then, I'm sure several million more have been booked. All right. Well, I'm not going to be booked because I'm just a visitor to the museum, and I, I know there's a lot more to see. So let's go do that. After you. This very unique item is a ballistic camera from nearly a century ago. We lightheartedly refer to it as old school CSI. Today's ballistic cameras are uh, digital in nature rather than having this photographic bellows. Uh, back in the early 1900s, an expended a uh, cartridge or a bullet would be placed on the small pedestal. It would be photographed. That small pedestal would contain either an expended cartridge or a slug. And that was the means of photographing the details of either the cartridge or the slug for presentation in court, for examination. Uh, this was indeed uh, the state-of-the-art ballistics mes method nearly 100 years ago. It's amazing to me that they were actually looking at bullets 100 years ago. We were trying. So how many floors is the museum? The museum is four floors. Three of them are open to the public. The fourth is our meeting room and archival storage. So is this your main space then, correct? Yeah, this was uh, once the detective bureau. Now it's the, the prime exhibit space for the museum. And this exhibit deals with the evolution of the police uniform here in Los Angeles. This is our most recently completed exhibit, and it documents the navy blue police uniform that we wore in the early 1800s, or in the late 1800s, which is depicted here on the end. Uh, you'll notice just a belt and a nightstick for exposed police equipment, and of course, the starch woolen hat that's often referred to as a stovepipe hat. Okay, and then we went to the khaki? Well, actually, this khaki, or olive drab color you see, was an alternate uniform. Uh, up until about 1920, we wore, during the hot months, the, the heat of summer, we wore an alternate uniform known as the summer uniform, which was this um, fairly unattractive olive drab color. <laughs> well, you don't want to say that too loudly, because that is the color the Sheriff's Department wears now. <laughs> it is. Fortunately, it's a little bit different than the Sheriff's colors, and we'd never do anything to d demean our partners in green. 
Nonetheless, uh, the chief would, uh, around Memorial Day, issue an order to switch to the summer uniform, and it's the only time, only time anywhere in LAPD history where we out of the dark blue that we're famous for. Really? But that didn't last too long. Fortunately, no. 